The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 202, NASDAQ up 30, S&P's up 12 and a half. Gold, gold down at $2.20, trading at 1567 an ounce. We get silver down 13 cents, seventeen dollars forty-six cents an ounce. Light sweet crude caught a bid up a buck forty-six, fifty-one dollars forty-one cents a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the ten-year down nine ticks, thirty-year off twenty-four. King dollar, king dollar is trying to get back inside its higher range again. You're up one hundred and forty-four at ninety-eight eight sixty-three. Euro is at one hundred eight. The yen is at one ten, and the pound is at one twenty-nine to one U.S. dollar. And uh, bottom line, folks, uh, bottom line, Tom, is that uh, Sherwin-Williams Green Paint Man uh, is definitely the name of the game once again out here. We're right back to where we were yesterday morning starting things off, right? Right near record highs, S&P just right up there as well. Pretty remarkable. A little bit of a sell-off in the NASDAQ, but uh, still Dow up almost like 200 points right now. Yeah, Pretty intense. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of Swim as we do every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, Kevin and his team, outstanding program. If you want to understand the option market, option strategies, futures, Real easy to do. You're already at the site. You just stay tuned in there, 11 to 12. If you haven't test driven yet the Thinkorswim platform, it's an outstanding platform. Check it out. Hit the button. Bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money each and every day. You can follow Kevin and his team. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, you know, more interesting, you know, it's funny. You look at the markets and you look how they advance, and each day, the relationship between the market and the risk off assets changes and evolves. Yes. You know, I'm really watching these risk off assets because the bonds, very quietly, the bonds have had a two pretty pretty strong two day sell off here where now we've got a, a 10 year yield, 162. So, not that anyone in stocks should get concerned about a 1610 year. <sighs> But it's been a nice bounce off those lows that we thought, frankly, would never stop going down on the tenure. But yeah. this certainly isn't getting my heart rate up, but it's something I'm watching for sure as I think the coronavirus, and you're starting to see that. Remember, we, I, we talked about this on yesterday's show, how watching Starbucks and yes. Disney showed some signs. Well, now the science still continue to creep into this market. It's, it's fascinating to watch. No, there, there's no doubt. You know what's going to be intriguing, Kevin, is that you know, my, my take is that bonds are going to go a lot lower. And that the correlation, though, like even at this interest rate structure, meaning it's so low, you can totally yep. understand, you know, why people are putting their money in equities because, they're, you know, like Exxon Mobil, right? I mean, it's got killed, but the bottom line, it's almost paying a 5% dividend, <laughs> okay? Can right. you... Can I mean, you the, they, they give you no choice, Tom. Right? Totally. You've got to look for, you've got to chase yields somewhere else. Yes. And it's not like there's no stocks out there that don't have a good yield. 22, 23 of the 30 Dow stocks have a dividend yield higher than the 10 year. I, and you know what's amazing? I mean, okay, so we know that even great stocks can go lower. But when I yes. look at an Exxon Mobil, okay, so I'm pulling up this morning, it's up 81 cents. It's paying a 5.67% dividend. It's like, okay, man, you know, who's kidding who here? Yeah. You know, Exxon Three is not... Three times the 10 year time. Yeah, Exxon is not going out of business, man. <laughs> right. You know, right. It, it, it's, right. You're it, exactly right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's and wild. And guess what, Tom? Here, here's a newsflash. Either is Macy's. And right. Macy's got almost a 9% dividend. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you, you look at all these names and... and but this is what I feel the way that investors should be looking at this market right now. The tenure is telling you that high dividend paying stocks. And then when it gets, believe me, if you get to two, 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 three or four in the tenure, absolutely. You'll start seeing rotations out of stocks and back into bonds. But not here. 
Sure. And, you know, if you look at, and if we break the other way, watch. Like, you know, what, what Simon's buying Tubman the other day, my, it looks to me that what we're really going to see here, Simon's is banking that the rates are either going to stay low or go lower, and they'll refinance the debt. Because that's, you know, remember it, at the crash, folks, everyone thought that all the big real estate companies were going to basically get out of business. What, it was just the opposite happened because what ended up happening, they had already had debt that was laying out there 8 or 9%. They got to refinance everything, and that made them right. so much money. It was unbelievable, you know? Right. Just remember, when interest rates, when bonds rally and interest rates go down, who does the best, right? Yes. Utilities and real estate. Right. Because they, they're heavy debt. Sure. Right? They carry debt, so they always do better. Who does worse? Banks, because of that interest margin. So, you know, the banks, the Russell, they should all fare pretty well today because of interest rates starting to creep up. But like I said, it's hard to get too concerned or excited about a 1.6 dividend yield. Oh, there's no doubt. And what's intriguing, you know, coming back to the, the, the NASDAQ or the S&Ps on the open, what we've had out here, folks, and Kevin had mentioned it, you know, you, you get an open, you get a spike at the open, you get a light, slight sell-off, and then it just grinds higher all day long. So it's going to be like, right. I was just, when I was just walking in the office here, I'm saying to myself, okay, like, we know this can't happen forever, but what is forever? Is it for another 30, 60 right. days? I mean, it can, it's, you know? It's the million-dollar question in trading, Tom. We know something's going to, you know, we know this trend is going to change, but when and from what level, Right, right. right. Yeah, there's no That's doubt. That's a gajillion dollar question. And, you know, guess what? We're already at, what, we're February 12th now? Yeah. You know, the, the, the bottom line, folks, is that, you know, once you start digging into the spring, man, the market likes blooming in the spring, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, you know, Oliver and I, Oliver Rennick and I talked about how, you know, uh, pretty positive news in Boeing. You know, remember, every day on the, on the calendar, it gets closer and closer to the 737 MAX get, getting yep. in the air. Yeah. And I think that's big for the U.S. economy. It's definitely big for Boeing. Credit Suisse just raised their target on the stock by $45. So, you know, I, I like to watch Boeing. Remember, Boeing is going to lift the Dow. Apple is going to lift three of the four indices. So you get good news on those, you're going to get good news on most of, the, on, on most of these indices. So, you know, th th this is just a time where – the 10-year yield is giving you no reason to exit stocks. Exactly. And in an Apple's case, folks, Apple has stayed at highs. Picture this. It stayed at highs where we know that their largest factories were closed and Foxconn extended that a bit. Well, it's still at highs. You can imagine when, you know, the bottom line is that they, those places are going to open back up. So right. it's, it's so intriguing, man. It really is. It's like, okay, it is what it is. But... Guess what? Tech, tech is ruling the world right now. And those SMHs, right? I mean, those chip stocks, man, they, they just, chips yeah. are everywhere, you know. Yeah, and, you, and you know what you got to do? You got to stay focused and you got to keep trading them. Totally. Right? And, and, and you got to let your attitude and your view of these names evolve over time. I mean, Apple is right in front of our eyes, Tom, is turning into a higher margin business than it was before with wearables and services. Those are higher margin than the yeah. iPhone. Amazing. And, right? and everyone has one of those white things in their ears. <laughs> you, God knows you, I do. You I go down the street. This weekend. I do, too. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Folks, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. Kevin, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the program. Always a good talk. Thanks for having me on, guys. Great speaking Thanks, with you. Kevin. Tommy and I are coming right if back, If you're not folks. currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 216. Nasdaq's up 40. S&Ps are up 14 and a half. Uh, you know, Tom, when I was listening to your show, this CVS, man, those numbers, like, were extraordinary. Now They sure were. <laughs> it's like, you know, we know we have problems with our drug pricing, right? Uh, meaning they're expensive. But when you see these numbers, folks, okay, do you have that article, Tommy? That, I mean, that, yes, I sure do. I can pull it up here. Let me jump. We can jump to my screen. I'm sure I have it because it's pretty staggering. Um, so here's the headline, right? Beat on fourth quarter earnings and revenue. The drugstore expects 2020 earnings 704 to 717, but here is the raw numbers, 173 a share versus 168. The revenue, though, right, almost 67 billion. They were only looking for 64 billion. Uh, the increase year over year, because they purchased Aetna, I actually still have it highlighted from looking at it, CVS's health benefits business more than doubled in revenue from 6.24 during the last three months of 2018 to 17.15, thanks largely to that acquisition of Aetna in November of 2018. Uh, same store sales 3.2% during the quarter, with sales in its pharmacy unit up 4.71. The company's pharmacy unit revenues 37 billion during the three months. And uh, here was, I think, yeah, here's the, so on an adjusted basis, CVS earned 1.75 billion or a buck 33 a share during the three months ended December 31st. That's compared with a loss of 419 million or 37 cents a share during the same quarter of 2018. Right. And, yeah. and you, know, you know, this is pretty funny, folks. I was sitting on my porch having a cup of coffee, right, listening to the program, and I had to jump back inside the house and basically hear it again because <laughs> what had happened is it, it's $3 billion more in 90 days, right? It and, sure is, and that's just above <laughs> expectations, let right. alone they already had grand expectations, right? And, and they beat them. Um, but, man, oh, man, the chart um, this morning, right? Boy, I was like, we spiked lower actually right away, down to almost 71 then within the span of by 7 a.m., they came out with the numbers at about 6.45, it looks like. By 7, 7.15, you're up at 76.35, but we're only barely up more than a percent right now, up a buck oh nine at 74.94. Um, quite a muted reaction to yes. a huge, huge beat. Three billion is hard to understand in 90 days. It is what it is, though. So, yeah. 
Uh, great day for crude numbers. Crude, we're getting crude, right? We sure are. So we got EIA inventories at 10.30 a.m. Yeah, quite the move on crude, man. It's still continuing. You back it up to just yesterday. We were at 40. So yesterday at 3 o'clock, let alone you back it up even further in terms of Monday afternoon, we were down below 49.50. Yesterday at 3 o'clock, we're at 49.73. You're up more than almost two dollars right now you were up there at about two dollars exactly 51.61 the price of crude i'm going to jump in here and see what kind of options we have prior to that 10:30 number so 51.61 we're looking at the march contract if you're looking at 11 a.m's you could have 51.75 is going to line up i'm just going to jump to the noons to see where they line up so the noons we're going to have to go almost 40 cents away no matter which side you choose with either 52 or 51.50 and then the 230s 51 is going to be our option. So it looks like the only real option where you're, you're not, you're very close to where it's trading at. It's 11 a.m. Here's your bullish spread from 51.75 to 53.25. You're about 14 pennies out of the money. That one's costing you, uh, excuse me, you're, you're buying it. That one's costing you $15 because you're good 14 pennies out of the money. Be aware you have an eight tick bid offer spread. That's a little big for these yeah, oil contracts. It is. Um, usually they're pretty tight. And you're going to see the same eight or nine tick spread on the bearish side as well. There's your bearish trade from 51.75 to 50.25. You'd be selling it. You're risking 27. You have a good 15 cents of intrinsic value in there. But boy, when you're paying a good seven cents bid offer here and a good eight cents here, that's a 15 tick bid offer spread on both sides. You're having to pay. Um, to set that up, and it's only a hundred and fifty dollar pie is in a buck fifty, and you're paying fifteen cents just in bid offer spread on both sides. That's a big spread, but uh, we'll see what happens. And I got the whisper number up here, okay. so let's take a look at this. Uh, here we go. So what, what what the market is looking for? Well, the the survey number um, is three a build of three point two million barrels, okay. I believe. Uh, yep. The whisper number is four point two million. I just put okay. in a build of five point two million. Perfect. Good. You know, so we'll see where this baby shakes out. Oh, this is awesome. B Mr. Bill. Okay, so last night, oh, there was a six million build last night. Okay, in the API? Yeah. And then a small build, in, uh, thanks, Mr. Bill, in gasoline. We'll see where this goes. I mean, the, the, yeah. bo the bottom line is that uh, there's, there's no doubt that what we've had thus far, folks, is that uh, oil has held... Um, if I get this active, let me see. I'll do the generic contract because you can see it a little bit better. Um, this is this was the bottom of the consolidation that it's been in, and we put this back, and you're going to see that this is this is an important part of the consolidation. This 50-60, yeah. you know, we got below it, but you know, now you're above it again. So the bottom line is that we'll see what it can hold because. When this doesn't hold, you're talking about a 42 uh, print in oil, 47 to 42. And just to throw up a headline on my screen up there, so you have OPEC slashing oil demand outlook for 2020 as the coronavirus outbreak stifles China. So pretty remarkable numbers here. OPEC downwardly revising its outlook for global oil demand growth to 0.99 million barrels per day in 2020. That's down 0.23 million barrel a day. So it was sitting wow. at about a million. And no, excuse me, it was sitting at about 1.23 million. Yeah. And they brought it down to a million. This, that's, that's almost a 20% reduction from the previous month's estimate. And what this is going to hint to, though, is that you might have the um, OPEC and allied non OPEC producers having to cut now with that big of a dr dramatic. So it's almost like in the US, right, where we get an economic slowdown. They say, well, that's okay because the Fed's going to come in, they're going to cut, and the market actually trades higher. The OPEC slowdown is so much that you might force those types of cuts in production, uh, which yes. the market might be re re responding to to trade higher. Almost oh, inverse, yeah. right? Bad, bad news for the market. They say that's okay. OPEC's going to cut, um, right? But that could be what's kind of giving it a little bit of a floor here from 49.50 to 51.60 that area. Yeah, exactly. And then it's going to depend, folks, on, on how much our drillers just keep drilling, drilling, drilling. Because right. the the understanding in the business, folks, is that the large integrated companies, meaning the Exxon, Chevrons of the world, they've taken over more of the shale. And as that has happened, well, those large integrated companies, you know, are not like the, the middle companies. They just keep going. I mean, they, they, they're going to just pump, pump, pump. 
Yes. Because overall, that you know is a good piece of it, but it's not like the medium companies. Like if you and I were in the oil business, we'd have to stop. I mean, because you go right. broke. They right. they're not going to go broke. They're just going to no. you know they're going to go through that cycle. They're going to go down. They're going to go up. And the real question is, you know, how much are they going to do? Uh, I guess you're not buying anything at Bed Bath and Beyond, Tom. <laughs> oh, me and me and plenty of people ain't buying at Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. Man. my goodness. Yeah. This, this is quite. This is quite a hit, folks. We'll, we'll get into this uh, after the oil numbers when we come back. But you get Bed Bath and Beyond right now uh, trading down three dollars and eighty three cents. And no, I now, think you got one more B in there. I do. Down, I know. I got it up. We're down a lot screen. more than three yeah. bucks. Uh, you're trading at eleven oh two. Quite yeah, a hit. we're down three bucks from like 15, though. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Stay yeah. right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 213. NASDAQ is up 40. S&Ps are up uh, 15. And let's see what we got here. Uh, where is she? Oil. So oil out here. What do we just pull off here? Whoa, look at this. I should have put it in a lot higher. A build you should have. <laughs> yeah, a build of 7.6 million barrels, folks. That is Yikes. one monster build. 
That um, sure is. You know, so uh, it, let's see. You got gas. I see. You also had gas inventories falling 95,000 barrels. Yeah. Big big numbers here, man. Um, we got plenty of oil. There's no there's and no to, there's no doubt about that. And to jump over to the price, uh, slight dip. 51.49. We were just at 51.60 and change when we came in. So you're talking about only 10 cents to the downside um, with crude reacting so far. Yeah, and it's early in the day, but the bottom line is that that is one monster build. Hey, so listen to this, folks. You got uh, wait to see this, Tommy. This is, I'm surprised that the S and P's aren't like up 45 bucks right now. So you get Powell, um, you know, getting questioned right now in the Senate, and. So listen to this quote. This is pretty amazing. So uh, this was at 10.20 this morning. You know, Powell, low rates are not really a choice anymore. And I don't know what that means, that part of it means. But here's the next one. He says, it'll more than, he said, it'll be more than likely, more, it, it, he says. It'll be more likely that thank the you. Fed. It'll be yeah. more likely that the Fed needs to return to forward guidance and large-scale asset purchases of longer-term securities. The, yeah. Says those tools will be used aggressively if needed. You know, we, we've talked about, you know, the, the Fed and the Fed put for years, uh, but this is this is a Fed put in an extraordinary way. There's no doubt. It is what yeah. it is. The um, market has to love to hear that, for oh sure. Oh, my God. You right. know, it, what happens, folks, is that when you, when you get the aspect of... Uh, the Fed buying, you know, short-term bonds, which they've been buying for a long period of time, and, and long-term bonds. Um, but when you're talking about asset purchases on a longer-term basis, that is where they really do have a put under the marketplace. Because what ends up happening is that the, the way the Fed has been structured is that they have much more control, or well, they've had much more control, over the short-term versus the longer-term. Bottom line, you buy... You, you know, you, you pile into longer-term assets. Guess what? It's going to be both ways here. So yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God. And and the no reaction means that the market maybe already knew that and expected it, right? Yes. That that's how. Yeah. 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 No doubt. And that's yeah. what we've been seeing on a continual basis on the way up. And yeah. I suspect the market's going to push them as far as they can push them, right? Yes. Well, why yeah. not? You know. Yeah. Now, let's go back to Bed, bed, bed Bath & Beyond and see what's going yeah. on in here. Because this is uh, the low for the year is 731. The high is 1957. Uh, we take a look at this. And, you know, this baby, uh, you know, has been a mess for a long period of time. If I bring this back, I'm just going to bring it back like 15 years. Look at this thing, man. I mean, this thing started heading down in J January 2015. It was a $79 stock. Gets all the way down to 730. Does it bounce up to 1770? And now you're going right back down to this. Look at this, man. The, the high of the low is 974. The low is 731. Wow. Still yeah, I mean, what's, what's crazy is when I pulled this back, I put it on a, a daily going back about a year. Yes. And it's amazing the run it had from that low. You go from 1957 in I, April yes. down to seven. I didn't realize it, it It even had this type of a rebound, right? Because I jumped, I said, you know, and it's been a, a tough chart for a while. And I said, my goodness, it went in August from 731 up to almost 18 um, in December. But then we got the huge gap lower on their earnings on January 9th. Is that right? So what are they, what am I seeing here? B B B Y, yeah, Bed Bath and Beyond, right? Yep, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So why do yeah. I have J January eighth listed on their earnings on the Thinkorswim platform? I'll have to take a look. Well, I, I think they they probably came out on the eighth, right? And then they opened yeah. on the ninth. So the eighth they closed at uh, sixteen dollars, and then the ninth they traded down to thirteen. Okay, and what did they just come out with? An update of an outlook? Uh, let's see. <laughs> That's what I was saying. I, 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 I thought we had got their earnings, and it looks like they just talked about... Uh, sales warning. Yeah, Sa yep. okay. So it's a sales so warning. That's now, just a warning. Jeez, okay. Exactly. Now, something that I want you to sh see, folks, I've talked about this before. What I've found is that when you get monster downdrafts, and watch this when we bring this up, because you just brought up a great point, Tom, about how far it actually went up. Yeah, I but, couldn't believe the run it had. Yeah. But what it didn't do is take sure. out a swing point. This yep. is what's crazy. So the, the swing point, folks, was $19.57. What, 
We got up to 1779. That is, I've, what I've seen over the course of years, that's always really dangerous. You know what I mean? You think that, well, when you look at it percentage-wise, that, that'd be a great trade being in it, no doubt about it. You're talking about, yeah. what, $8 to, you know, 17 18 yeah. That being said, it's really dangerous, folks, when it can't prove that it can take out a high. Um, I, and and no, no high. I mean, well, I'm talking about a swing high, but that's intense, man. And then you see them fall apart again. And you can see if you're looking... On the weekly, look at this volume, man. I mean, we're going to the lows. They're unloading this thing left and right, man. And and the numbers were, were stark, man. Analysts were looking for a 3.9% drop in same-store sales for the fourth quarter. And in December and January, it was 54 a decrease. So they, they were already basically allowed by the market to drop same store sales 4%. And they're saying 5.4% is, is the number that they're looking to come in right now. And um, then, you know, of course, the, those rents and the amount of space that they have are just astronomical, man. I yeah. Mean, you know, yep. it's, it's like, okay, you know, I was uh, a couple days ago. Bottom line, I needed some towels. I mean, I didn't go to Bed Bath & Beyond and Macy's. You know, I, I just clicked Amazon, right? Did you? Nice. Yes, yeah, I, I was, did. I was going to ask. I said, you go to Target maybe? You go I, to Walmart? Well, you know what um, I forgot about, actually, which, which is pretty wild. I thought about this morning when, I'm, I, you know, they, they showed up. I said, oh, that's interesting, man. Why didn't I go to Macy's? Because I like Macy's because they're, you know, so I'm going to price that out versus, you know, just I went to Amazon saying, okay, give me some cotton towels here, man. <laughs> if I wanted towels, I could do Amazon. I would probably just, my, I would go to Target because I, I think they have a, the best price for the buck for good products and you get to feel them if you want some towels. Um, yeah, which is great. Macy's, I know. In, Macy's in my head. I love Macy's stuff. I have plenty of it, but that's that's a little pricey. I don't know if you're paying um, the price you should be when you walk into a Macy's and, and no, buy. No, I, I agree. they got they, yeah. they got to be on sale because you what, what ends up happening, folks, and I don't know about you folks, but I get confused on the aspect of okay, you want cotton, and it's okay, what type of cotton is it? What it is? They've made so many different cotton ones now. It's like, okay, does it dry you, or is it one of those slick ones? Do you know what I mean? It's like I do. It's like crazy, man. You know. That's why I said I wouldn't. I, I'm not comfortable quite yet buying towels on Amazon. It's yeah. one of the few things I'm not. No, Clothes, I, I can see why. Towels, you know, right. I was crossing my fingers, but I knew that uh, you could send them right back too. That's it. There, there you go. That's it. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Actually, we're coming back with our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstat. We are going to be talking currencies. Dow, Dow Industrials right now up 218. Nasdaq's up 35. S&P's up 14 and a half. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow up 200, NASDAQ up 35, S&P's up 13 and a half. And uh, hey, Tom, when we swapped from uh, whatever we were using to Shopify, uh, what, a year and a half ago now? Um, yeah, for approximately, yeah. Yeah, the bottom line is that we should have bought Shopify, I guess, right? We sure should have, man. They are on quite a roll, as uh, we're not the only ones, it looks like, that they're having success with, man. This, this is an amazing chart, folks. And, and you know, what ended up happening, in, and there, as I just said with Tommy, we're definitely not the only ones that uh, basically made a change. When we changed our website, you know, bottom line is that we you know, went from uh, a website that was highly intensive on a uh, programming site to uh, Shopify. And guess what? <laughs> the world is doing it, too. This is Boy, amazing. Yeah, I just put it on a three-year weekly, even, and you see the bouncing around in all of 2018, and that is the year that we came over, I think, towards the end of it. And man, oh man, looks like that was that was quite a year for them ramping up because the year in their equity of 2019, you go from basically 145 ending 2018, and we're now uh, just touched 593. And and look at this growth, folks. This is like amazing. Okay, when you put the numbers down, this is you know we've seen some big numbers when we pull these up, uh, and and 2016, they took in. Well, let's just do 2018. 2018, 1.1 billion. 2020, they're looking to do 2.1 billion. <laughs> I know, and they keep ramping it up to 2021. They're going to add 700 million from 2020 to 2021, which is like 34% growth. The three year growth, um, 67. 60. So look at that revenue breakdown. Pretty cool. Merchant Solutions, 935 million. Yeah. Subscription Solutions, 642. So, of course, they're charging people to run a website and then they're charging fees for the credit card processing as well. Right, right. Now, do, That's the big do, part we, of it. do we use Stripe or use Shopify for that? We used both of them, I think, huh? We use Stripe as a, uh, as, as our provider. As the provider. middle, right? Yeah. As the middle, yeah. yeah, right. That's pretty, it's, it's hey, it's, it's, it's amazing, actually. It really is amazing. It sure is. It is. And um, you can see why a lot of people, especially, um, you know, what what we do is a, is a little bit higher level. Of course, you have recurring subscriptions. You have live streaming video embedded. You have a, a, a subscription area. You have your, you know, membership area for all the subscribers out there. Yes. You go to your account page. You access your newsletter. Um, it's even more sophisticated than what mo pe most people need when you're selling products, delivering them. It's a pretty simple um, process of creating a website, creating an order form. That person gets charged. Their information is contained. They have a customer page, and it's all streamlined in one operation. Um, for those types of small businesses, uh, it doesn't get much simpler, man, than, than building a template, you know, interface yes. that ties into your products, and they handle everything. And they, the, the accountability is huge, right? Yeah. And, and, and what ends up happening, of course, and that's the biggest thing for safety, is that it's on them, the other side of it, meaning 
That's right. The, and the we've never stored the, credit card data. The, the, that's yeah. usually something that's only with the provider. But right. w whether it's, you know, um, keeping the, the customer databases, et cetera, because, you know, our, our previous websites, we manage the servers. You have a, a DDS attack, you know, fairly innocent, but it's just an overload. The site goes down. You can't yeah. stream. You, your customers can't gain access. Um, you then have to, you know, whether it's your own employers, whether it's your contacting contractors that are highly um, skilled in the technology industry to help you get through this endeavor, all of that is taken care of on that side when you're dealing with a partner like that, which is a, a big advantage because in today, it's, it seems like there's a hack every week for a, a Fortune 500 company, right. let alone how easy it would probably be to um, attack a smaller company without the resources. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here today. You got, uh, well, Bed Bath & Beyond, we already talked about. That's the highest volume. It's almost down four bucks now. You got Micron Tech, that's still on fire. That's up 350. <laughs> um, Lyft is down four bucks. So that's quite a hit, man. Look yeah, at that. we can talk about them. Their yeah. uh, earnings last night, on the heels of Uber earnings last week, Uber, the big deal coming out of their earnings, they're going to be profitable by the end of this year. Lyft still stating they're going to be profitable by the end of next year. That was what was on the table. The, the hope, I guess, at least, was that they were going to upgrade that a bit, as Uber had done. Lyft not quite pushing that yet. Um, some of the commentary I heard out there is that, you know, Lyft is a smaller company. They have more growth to go. They are not quite maybe at the stage where they can say that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start earning a profit at the expense of, of growing. So it looks like they're going to need one additional year um, to, to hit that number in the fourth quarter of 2021. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild, man. I but mean, they had good numbers, man. Yeah, they had good numbers. And you know, you're down four dollars. But what what has happened with Lyft, folks, is that we just went up for the last yeah. four days from forty-seven dollars up to fifty-five. Yeah, you could yeah. argue that prior to Uber's numbers, they were trading at forty-seven. Yes. So they traded basically on the combination of the two earnings from forty-seven to forty-nine. They did spike up to fifty-three, but they're still five percent above where they were trading at before Uber came out and up the kind of raised the bar that Lyft maybe didn't quite live up to. Um, but just to pull up their numbers real quick, because they they beat almost everywhere. Oh, so they lost a buck nineteen. They were okay. supposed to lose a buck thirty-nine. Adjusted loss, 130 million. They were supposed to lose 164. Revenue over a billion. They were supposed to come in at 984. Active riders, 22.9 versus 22.8. Revenue per an active rider, 4440. You like that number, huh? How about it? 4440 totally. uh, versus 4319. And contribution margin, 54 versus 52. It's, we always joke about it, man. It has got to be tough to be an executive of a publicly traded company, and you come in with those numbers, and uh, the market says, nope, we were looking for better, man. Intense. No doubt. Yeah. Let's get over to that gold market for a second. We got a little movement out here, uh, and what's intriguing, let's see, active contract. Yeah, we're on the, no, we're, we're not on, we're at GCJ. We're on the J contract. Okay, so April contract. We hit a low out here today of 1564. You're at 1569 right now. This is pretty cool, man. I mean, you know, what's happening here, folks, is that you, you just don't have sellers uh, when this pulls back. You know, you, you can see it quite clearly. You know, the, the big downdraft was about a week and a half ago. That when we went from 1584 to 1552. You basically yet come down. Yesterday we had uh, 232,000 contracts. We're not even going to get close to that today. We're at 135, and it's already rejected that lower price. So that's a nice little setup that, that is setting up here. And the thing that is amazing, you know, inside the gold market is that gold is at all-time highs <coughs> in all the major currencies except the U.S. dollar. If you put gold okay. in the yen, you put it in the euro, and you put it in the pound, all-time highs. And so what's intriguing here is that gold is a world asset, folks. So it's just showing, number one, how strong the dollar is, but it's also showing how strong gold is because, you know, the dollar's been going higher and gold is basically going going sideways. You yeah. Know? So it's going to be intriguing yeah. uh, how this baby shakes out. If we get any strength at all in the euro, uh, the pound, um, you know, the bottom line is that this thing uh, can make a run. Pretty wild. Yeah, I would agree. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. And don't forget, I'm Amos the Basil Chap. We'll talk about that as soon as we're coming back tomorrow night. Great workshop, folks. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Four o'clock.
to 5.30 for his subscribers. Real easy to be a subscriber. Just hit it. Tommy and I are going to be coming right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as the number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Basil Chapman will be hosting a 90-minute live webinar for subscribers to his daily trading service, The Opening Call, Thursday, February 13th from 4 till 5.30 p.m. Basil will host his live webinar titled The Dark Cloud Cover, an Essential Market Analysis. In this 90-minute webinar, Basil will discuss the techniques he uses when identifying market downturns using his Chapman Wave, including how he uses specific ETFs like the SMH Semiconductor ETF as a canary in the coal mine leading indicator when looking for market downturns. By identifying particular weaknesses in the market technicals, Basil is able to identify the severity of the market reaction, and this is just one of many topics he'll be covering. To sign up now for the opening call, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't miss out on this special 90-minute live webinar with Basil Chapman, Thursday, February 13th. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow up on 192, NASDAQ up about 41, S&P's up 13 and a half. And as you come over to our website, folks, so you just heard the promotion for our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, uh, doing his workshop, uh, which is tomorrow night, uh, from 4 to 5.30. The way you come into this workshop, go to TFNN, right on the featured content, you can just hit the opening call. You're going to see right there, you can hit subscribe. You can get the opening call for one month for $128.00. Six f months for $5.95, which is a savings of $173 or 22%. A year for $9.95, which is a savings of $5.41 or 35%. Now, the reason I go through all those folks, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you want to test drive it, you can test drive it. You can commit to this workshop. This workshop, Basil always does great workshops. And uh, can you just go over the workshop, Tom, and what Basil's going to be talking about? Yeah, so if you haven't checked out Basil's webinars before, I mean, it's a, it's an absolutely great time because we're almost at all-time highs. He's going to be talking about, of course, the Chapman Wave. You deal with peaks and troughs, what kind of peak we're at. So he's going to be talking about what techniques he is looking at as he was looking at the last downturn in the market that started in late January. 
and what he was looking at in terms of the SMH, the semiconductor, canary in the coal mine. Now the Dow is charged back from then. The semiconductor is charging back as well. Be interested to see what Basil has to say tomorrow night. But he is going to be looking at markets a majority of the time, the bullish bias, so it takes specific conditions to change the trend significantly, what those specific conditions Basel looks for. Momentary negative news spurts are just momentary negative market reactions, spotting those. The frequency of specific bad news headlines becoming very important. And when the market consistently reacts poorly to the news, it begins a quote unquote dark cloud cover in Basel's opinion, along with many other topics. 90 minutes, Basel always does a great job. So check it out and uh, you can be in there today checking out the opening call. Ride that wave, baby. Ride it. Let's go. Uh, totally. Stay right there, folks. Think of Swim's coming up next. And Basil Chapman, Steve Rose, Dave White. I'll be back. Thanks, pal. Have Thanks, a great man. one. You too. Bam! Go get him, folks.